Good morning. We are still in Kuala Lumpur and we're getting a pretty late start to our day if we're being honest with you. We're kind of flexible on the plans for today, but we've heard that a lot of the best things to do here involve food. So we are going to be mostly eating today. Yeah, I think we're just going to wander around to the different parts of Kuala Lumpur. For example, we're going to head to Little India first. We know that for sure. And yeah, all you're probably going to see us do in this video is eat food. Which is not the worst thing because then we'll be able to give you some recommendations. But it should be interesting to see if we do eat in India, having recently come from there within the last like three and a half weeks, if we want the food and what we think of it. Could we really start the day properly without picking up food from 7-Eleven? Probably not. We have decided to go for a slightly unorthodox breakfast option and we've just gone for some onigiri. Seriously, we can't get enough of this stuff. It's so good. Rachel has gone for coffee tannic. Which is the same as the tea yesterday, except for coffee, so coffee with evaporated milk. And then I've gone for an iced tea with lychee. We are just walking down this street now that has shop after shop all in one row selling kids toy cars and scooters but I don't mean toy cars as in like ones you would play with that are miniature I mean the ones that you sit in and ride down the street on and these are not just the toy cars that you would have to pedal that like were Fisher Price looking. These are Hello. like Jeeps and G-Wagons and Land Rovers and Ferraris and Porsches and stuff like that. That I don't know if they're like battery powered or electric powered, mostly because neither of us were allowed to have these as kids, probably when they were first brought out because they were so expensive. And now we're just seeing, I don't know why, in one area of town, they would have so many stores in a row that are selling them. Seems a little odd, but yet really fascinating to see. And we're just seeing like one of the cars, which is maybe the kind of like toddler size. It's going for a hundred ringgit. That's peanuts. As we are walking through to Little India, we realized that we're going past a couple of landmarks that we ended up seeing during our walking tour yesterday, but we didn't have time to explain. So we figured that we would take the time to do so in this video. So what's behind us is called Madurka Square. And if you can see the flag up there, that's a Malaysian flag. And it was hoisted for the first time in this square when they gained their independence from the British on August 31st, 1957. So their Independence Day is actually in two days time. And just opposite Merdeka Square is Banganan Sultan Abdul Samad. Yes, I got it right. And this was built in the late 19th century and was used as a seat of administration by the British when they were ruling over Malaysia. And since independence, it's still been used as a working government building. And you can't quite see it from this position. I'll tilt the camera up and you'll get a very unflattering look of us. But that clock tower there is jokingly referred to by the locals as Little Big Ben. <laughs> We've just come across the National Mosque, which was completed in 1965. And what makes this mosque different from all the other ones we've seen is the roof. As you can see behind me, this blue here is the roof. And typically on a mosque, it would be a dome shape. But in this instance, it's actually the shape of an open umbrella. Why an umbrella shape? 
Well, apparently it is synonymous with the culture here. Umbrellas have lots of uses. You can shield yourself from the rain and during rainy seasons, but also it's something that they use as something of a parasol to shield themselves away from the sun or if they just want a bit of privacy. just had a little wander around the area called Brickfield or otherwise known as Little India and we got to see a bunch of jewelry stores, textile stores as well as some restaurants serving Indian food. I loved it because it was very vibrantly colored and as we walked around we got treated to a concert of Bollywood music. So the reason that this is called Brickfield is because obviously back when Kuala Lumpur was gaining ground as a city, there was a lot of need for construction. And so a lot of the bricks to go into that construction were manufactured in this area of the city. But now we're kind of peckish, so it's time to go eat some Indian food. We literally sat down, they wiped the table, and then they put a banana leaf down, and then they just kept on pouring stuff. We didn't even have to ask for anything, and they've just given us all this food. It looks incredible. No idea what it is, but super excited to try it all out. We've gone around to trying pretty much everything on our plates now, and I think we're getting a semblance of what everything is. So we start off, so this is like cucumber with some curd and yogurt. This is just curried, I'm not sure what the veg is, but it's beautiful. Turnip and carrot, chilies, which we're not touching. What seems to be some sort of chutney, like a mango, but it kind of tastes a bit citrusy. This I think is semolina of some kind with a different flavoring, not sure exactly what. It tastes a little bit of cinnamon to me. A little bit, yeah, but nothing overpowering. And then these are kind of curried chip potatoes. Okra curry. I'm not 100% sure what's in here. Green beans, I think. And then Rachel didn't go for this, but I've got kind of a mixture of some lamb, some fish, and some chicken curries as well. All of them have been absolutely superb. And honestly, having that served with what's quite a soft poppadom as well, really works. On top of that though, we're washing that all down with the masala chai. It's nice to have it back. Lunch was absolutely delicious and it only came to just over eight Canadian dollars. I think it was like 28 ringgit or something like that. Incredible value for money. I just love the fact that because uh, Indians do make up a fair amount of the Malaysian population, and you know that you're getting a pretty authentic experience. And equally, I just love the style of it. Like literally, you sit down, you come here, the only thing you have to stipulate is whether you're vegetarian or you're not vegetarian, and then if you want to drink. And that's it. You get what you get, spice level for spice level, though to be honest with you, it's never too spicy and you have chutneys to help keep the spice down. And you get an absolutely huge and delicious plate of food. Seriously, that was really, really good.
Yeah, it definitely compared in quality to what we bought in India. As you said, more like South Indian cuisine. Yeah. But I didn't realize how much I'd missed Indian food. Oh, me neither. Even though it's only been like a month. <laughs> We're walking back to our Airbnb from Little India and we have just come across Central Market, which is another location that was on our walking tour yesterday. Central Market used to be a wet market back during the colonial era, but since then it's then transformed and is now an arts and crafts market instead. Yet another place we saw on our walking tour yesterday, what is behind us is the oldest mosque in the city and it sits where the Gombak and Klang rivers meet. This is particularly significant because the name Kuala Lumpur is actually Muddy Estuary as a translation into the local dialect here. So that's actually how we got its name. And I think we're just going to walk back along the river. Well, we were planning on heading up a night market this evening, but then the heavens have opened and it's been absolutely heaving it down ever since. So we decided to do something a bit different. Our Airbnb is in a condo building and they have several different amenities, including the gym. So we're going to go check that out. We just come back from the gym. It's nice to get a workout for the first time in about four months. It was a bit scarce on equipment and the equipment that was there was pretty old and there were a lot of people. It just didn't feel the cleanest either, but we made do with what we had and it felt good to move. Definitely, it was still a nice workout all the same. The condo complex that we're staying in also has a few convenience stores downstairs, but they're pretty comprehensive as most convenience stores are in Asia. So we picked up some food for tonight as well as tomorrow morning because we have an early start. And so I think we're just going to watch more Netflix while we can, take advantage of that and enjoy that. We are very excited for what we get to share with you tomorrow. But until the next time, take care. And keep smiling.